Hello internet, what's up my peeps? The project at hand, as Mr. Camarata would put it, is uh, this fence. It's painfully obvious I did a horrible job with it when I built it many years ago. Fortunately, I've learned quite a bit, so I'll be able to rebuild it better, stronger, faster. We have the technology. Unfortunately, I have both blackberries and grapes at the back of the fence that I need to take into consideration when replacing it. Nonetheless, let's get to it. but I know I can hit them with uh, a brush and get the worst off and I'll be painting these anyhow it doesn't really matter can you tell that spring is in the air every neighbor is out doing yard work So quite a bit of elbow grease, these are done. Again, some of them are still rougher than others, but on the whole, much, much better. So now I'll just treat these with some, I think it's called impregnation oil. That sounds wrong, let me double check that. Both Google and Microsoft say that Impregnating solia is impregnating oil, not impregnation. So let's go with impregnating oil then, shall we? Yeah, that only took forever. Not really sure if it's a good idea to paint them or sorry to oil them in uh, direct sunlight but since it's only early april i'm hoping it should be fine nonetheless they're way better off now than they were before
Okay, first coat is on. As you might be able to see, one of my neighbors has a burn pile going and this is all ash. Not much I can do about it. I'll paint it over anyhow when I give this the second coat when it's in place. Still a bit annoying, it's even in the paint. So I'll let these dry for an hour or so and then I'll put them in the garage overnight. Any person with any sense for scale can see that these boards aren't as wide as the existing fence. I'm not one of those persons. Luckily though, I've learned the hard way to double check and then double check again all of my measurements and I realized I need 11 more boards. I won't be filming me fixing these for obvious reasons. sure how well you can see this with the sun and everything but this is this is what happens when you don't treat your wood properly and just paint on it. My uh, brother who is a carpenter is coming over later to help me tear this down and put this back up so I prepare as much as I can to make it as smooth as possible but we'll see. Murphy always shows up when you least need him.
I'm really grateful for my brother's help, not uh, only because he's a carpenter, but because it's always easier to do this when you too. I will be adding a sort of a crown or a cap or a hat, I'm not really sure what it's called, on top of the fence. And when that's done, I'll give it another lick of paint. I'm not looking forward to painting this side. It seems as if I can make the entire cap. Let's go with cap from one board. So I think I have it figured out. If I make the first cut 35 wide, I need to go 12 up. It's that tooth and then it needs to be 35. Now, since I have an angle on this, which is placed like this on the fence now in order to, to encourage the rain to drain off the cap, I need to cut the cap with 20 degree angles on the top piece as well. Because it will be angled like this, which means that this together will be 90 degrees, this will be straight. So I'm going to cut it like this to get another bevel like this. This needs to be from this side to this side, roughly 36, maybe a smidge more, since the width of the fence with the two boards on the side will be... No, 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 wait a minute. This isn't, well, it's 22. Okay, when you assume you make an ass out of you and me, this one needs to be 40 or 66. Yeah, I can get 66 out of this. So I realized I need to cut a new piece. I, I most likely need to cut one of these, uh, but the top cap. I did the same mistake I did when I made my cone frame. I didn't take into consideration that even if three, three pieces of this number stacked like this might be 66, when that's at an angle, this gets longer. So this is most likely too narrow. We'll give it a try, but it will probably look really dumb if I put this on there. Fingers crossed, but yeah, most likely not a good fit. As you can see, it's way too narrow. That's what you get when you don't think properly. Otherwise, it seems to work just fine with, uh, with this. Oh, God. Oh, I'm such a moron. Measure from here to here. And then I measure from here to here. I'm actually gonna go 71 on this one. And it's 79. So we need to set the blade up for 79 from the fence. Hmm. It's a bit wonky, it seems. I'll pick up the slap slack on this side. I don't I'm not going to have a cap or a, a lip on this side. 
This side was approximately negative 10 fun to paint. It was doable, but especially over there where the grape is, it was, let's call it cumbersome, shall we? This side is a lot easier to paint because of the rough finish. The paint sticks to it a lot better, but I still need to get another coat on here. It's good paint, but you need three coats to get it to cover it properly. So that's the third coat. Again, this side was absolutely no fun to paint, but it's done now and I won't be adding any more coats of this. It's been overcast pretty much all the time I painted. The sun came out once or twice. So I think uh, the, the paint should have a good chance to dry properly.
So we need to, or I, I prefer to calculate the volume of the cylinder before I mix up the concrete because there's really no use in mixing up too much or too little. The height, H equals 22 centimeters and the diameter equals 12 centimeter and volume equals the area of the top circle or the bottom since it's a straight cylinder times the height and the area equals let me just double check yes pi times r squared r equals d divided by 2 so r equals 6 which gives us that area equals pi times 6 squared which means that a equals pi times 6 squared is 6 by 6, it's 36. 36 times pi. 113 square centimeters. 113 times the height, 22, equals 2486 cubic centimeters or 2.486 liters. So roughly two and a half liters of concrete is needed to fill that volume and it sounds logical because that's something you always should do. Do a sort of a internal check to see if the measurements are correct. How much is two and a half liters or whatever measurement you use normally in, in, in your day to day life. And that volume seems it's reasonable. This was dumb. Okay, let's see what we got. It was a lot colder last night than I anticipated. So I'm hoping this has set properly. It's not perfect, but it's in the good enough. Fastening this to the actual fence in this part, now we're using 80 mil screws. Drill through this, these are 5 mil, so I'll drill through 5 mil. And the other end that attaches to the bracket that I just sort of secured, I will be using these types of screws. And they will be driven directly into this. I might pre drill again because this pine isn't really strong. Not sure what these are called in, in English. It's Parma screw, farmer's screw in Swedish. So this is one of the few occasions I'm actually using this clamp on my drill press. I normally never use it, but for this it's perfect. The bracket is wider than this piece of lumber. I thought that bracket was for 45 by 45 mil, but apparently not. So I need to make a spacer. I'm just gonna make it out of the scrap piece. But first, 
we're going to impregnate this one. I'm still certain that's not the correct word to use. You're not really supposed to prune grapes and blackberries at this time of year, at least not here in Sweden. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until the end of this year and tidy it up then. So I think this turned out great. A huge improvement compared to the old fence, that's for sure. A big thanks to my brother for helping out and a big thanks to you for watching. I hope you found it useful, interesting, entertaining or all of the above. Please stay safe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!